Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Collins Prepper. We have a nice sunny day here in Virginia today. We took out the bug out bag radio. We got it set up here in the backyard. We have the typical accessories. We've got the tuner there so I can take advantage of the SWR meter. The SCS Pactor modem. The ASU FT817ND radio. Hardened power systems QRP Ranger. That's being powered by a 20 watt flexible solar panel here. Provided by FlexSolarCells.com. And the antenna we're using today is Chameleon Antenna's F-Loop Antenna. But we have a nice addition for that antenna, thanks to Carl at Chameleon Antennas. He was kind enough to send one of his new products, the Remote Tuner Remote Rotation Kit, the RTRR-1. There's the manual there that came with it. And we're going to go over that today. Here's the controller for that tuner. What this does, it allows you to remotely tune and rotate the F-Loop antenna. In previous videos I've had the F-Loop antenna sitting next to the radio but with the remote tuning, remote rotation kit I can now separate the antenna from the station I can elevate it, put it in a better location get it away from obstructions that might interfere with the antenna's performance but still operate without having to get up and down and going over to the antenna. So let's walk over to the antenna and show you what the RTRR-1 kit's all about. Here's our close-up of the F-Loop antenna with the RTRR-1 kit. Today I'm using the high efficiency radial. I painted that OD green. It does not ship green. It's actually aluminum. But I wanted to mention that so if you get this antenna and it doesn't come in green, it's because I did it after I got it. The kit consists of a bracket that mounts on the front of the tuner. You remove the original knob. Chameleon Antennas provides all the tools to remove the knob. And the bracket holds a drive motor that rotates clockwise and counterclockwise with the controller to adjust the tuning. Below is the pedestal that is also provided with the kit. Is another drive motor that allows you to rotate the antenna. Now loop antennas are inherently directional. I'm going to try to get my pointer here. They're directional this way. Going through the loop is the null. This is where you're going to have the lowest receive signal this way. But broadside you're going to get the most signal. So it's nice to be able to rotate that antenna and fine-tune the station you're communicating with. This works really well for the windlink.org system because the RMS software actually gives you the bearing of the station you're communicating with. So I always bring a compass with me. The point of that tripod there on the kit I actually pointed north so I can set the bearing for the different stations I'm communicating with. So that's what the kit's comprised of. The bracket that goes on the front, the tripod with the three legs, a control cable, a control box, and all the tools necessary to mount the kit to the F-Loop antenna tuning box. So let's go back over to the radio and I'll show you how to tune it. The controls are straightforward on the remote controller for the RTRR-1 kit. You have a switch here, slide switch for rotation. That controls the rotation of the antenna for its direction. You throw it to the tune position and that controls the drive motor on the front of the tuning knobs. Below, Sorry about the wind, guys. Hello, you have another slide switch that gives you three settings for the speed of the motors, slowest, max, and faster. I have my operating frequency already up, 7.102 megahertz. I have a little bit of volume. And what we're going to do is tune the front knob remotely for peak noise. We want to make that antenna as resonant as we can for this frequency. So I'm going to adjust plus or minus until I hear peak noise out of that antenna. Now the noise dips, so I'm going in the wrong direction. There we go. Now it's dipping, I went too far, I'll come back. I got a, a good peak in noise. Now you will pick up some RFI from the controlling unit. You work through that, but you can definitely hear the difference in the receive signal when I move that rotating motor on the antenna. We have a dip. And that's pretty much max noise. So now what I'm going to do is actually transmit and use the SWR meter here to fine tune this and get it just right. And how I do that is on the radio I put it in the AM mode or amplitude modulation so I don't pull out full power but I get enough to drive the meter on the tuner. So let me get that set up. I'm going to go off frequency a little bit because you can hear a station in there communicating and make sure I'm fine tuned for this band. I'm going to go to AM. I'll turn the volume down. And again, amplitude modulation gives me a little bit of carrier 
to drive the SWR meter here. So I'm going to hit the push to talk and I have a little bit of forward power and not very much reflective power so let me go ahead and tweak that button here and you can see how the reflective power is coming and going because I'm rotating that motor. So that's pretty good. Let's get full 5 watts. We'll go to FM and drive it. There we go. We've got 4.8 watts out. Very little reflected here. I can try a little fine tune. There we go. We dipped it again just by tapping the red button here. And now that antenna is actually tuned up for operation on that frequency. So we'll actually go back to the frequency we want to operate on. We're a little bit off so we didn't interfere with that station. And we'll rotate back down. And now I'll show you how the rotation works at the antenna. Alright guys, we've got everything set up with the radio here. Over here on the computer, I've got one of these marshmallow sticks that the kids left out here as a pointer. The RMS Express software actually gives me a bearing to the station I want to talk to. So the station I'm going to try to connect to is in upstate New York. From my position it's saying the bearing is 35 degrees. So what I'm going to do with the controller here is throw this switch into rotation. I pointed one of the legs on the antenna towards north so I can actually look at the antenna get a rough idea of north and adjust this antenna so the bearing is at roughly 35 degrees. Then I can fine tune this later. Once I'm receiving that station I can tweak it clockwise or counterclockwise for the best received signal. So my cameraman who's been very cooperative today and understanding is going to pan up to the antenna and I'm going to show you that antenna in rotation mode using the remote controller. So I'm a little bit at 90 degrees now, so I'm going to come back a little bit with that antenna. And again, I'm working with that leg in the front that I pointed at north, and I'm going to guess that's about 35 degrees. So the antenna is pointed in the right direction, the front knob is correctly tuned, all using this remote control box here at the station. And again, this allows me to put the antenna away from me and get it in a better position so we don't interfere with this performance with natural or man-made obstructions. So let's fire up the computer and see if we can connect to that station. Alright guys, I shifted the equipment around because the sunlight was getting unbearable. And I've been watching the band conditions online. And they're not very good today, but we're going to go ahead and try to make that connection to that station in New York now. And there we have it guys, our first connection today. I had to change stations. I'm now connected to Alpha Juliet 4 Gulf Uniform. I believe that station's down in Georgia from Virginia. But we got a good Pactor 3 connection, 600 bits per second, with chameleon antennas, RT, RR-1, remote tuning, remote rotation, kit for the F-loop antenna. We have our connection. So we had our first connection today with the chameleon F-loop antenna here. My cameraman's helped me out again this afternoon. So we're going to actually look at the drive motor on the tuner, because it's kind of hard to see from a distance. I have the controller here at the base of the antenna. And there's three speed adjustments here, slowest, max, and faster, and you have a plus or a minus button that allow you to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Now I took a red sharpie and put some marks on that aluminum socket that goes over the tuning knob that comes from the factory, and I'm going to adjust that. I put the stripes on there so you can actually see the rotation better in the camera. So right now we're set to slowest. This is how you would tune and peak for that max noise with the plus and the minus buttons, you're actually driving that drive motor clockwise or counterclockwise. If you want to go faster, you throw the slide switch all the way over to the left, and now it'll run a little bit faster for a coarse and fine tuning. The cameraman's panning down on the buttons there. And then the back speed is in the center, and we'll go back up to the knob on the tune control, and you can see how quickly that's tuning now. So that's the drive motor. So this would be the course tune, and then you would slow your speeds down. Once you're operating in a specific band, you really shouldn't have to turn this that much. You'd want to put this on the slowest speed and just kind of tap it with your finger a little bit to get minor incremental changes on your tuning solution. And then, of course, you can throw the switch in the rotator position, and then the drive motor underneath the whole F-loop antenna rotates the tuner so you can point the antenna to the right bearing for the station you're working. And this is also a method for fine-tuning distance stations as you tweak the antenna going left to right as you dial it in for maximum received sensitivity. Again, thank you for Carl at Chameleon Antennas for providing an opportunity to demonstrate for you guys on the channel the RTRR-1 Remote Tuning Remote Rotation Kit 
for the Chameleon F Loop antenna. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Collins Prepper with another field antenna video and a little bit of training to get ready for field day. That's coming up where you take your ham radios to the field once a year and do some training so you're ready if there's ever an emergency or disaster that you can provide communications for your family and friends. Thanks for watching, guys.